Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Max Samara and I'm here checking out the King of Fighters 97. Finally, it took me a while to get around to this. Specifically, Global Match, because it's Vita, obviously. So, why the hell did they pick King of Fighters 97? There are multiple reasons why you shouldn't. I can tell you why. It's because this game is meant for the Chinese. I'm not entirely sure why the Chinese wanted a copy of... King of Fighters 97 brought up to um, uh, modern day standards, but they've done it. So apparently King of Fighters 98 is less important than King of Fighters 97. King of Fighters 14 is less important than King of Fighters 97 for whatever reason, but then again I guess 14 is already on the PS4 and the PC, so what have you. Let's go have a quick look around before we actually go and hop in. So the only trophies in this game are Beat It with all of the different teams and beat multiplayer by getting 10 wins in a row and win 20 times and this does not include the ad hoc functionality which is honestly dumb because I don't think you'll ever get close to that if you're even a regular person you've got your online scoreboards here in order to appear on the on a scoreboard you need get um you need to have default game options which is fine $35.95 apparently, that makes enough sense to me I suppose. You've got a gallery, but you actually need to finish the game in order to unlock the gallery art. And fuck Orochi. Orochi is the final boss in this game and he is almost impossible. Even when I was playing on difficulty level 1, I could not beat him. I do not know why. He is just that much of a cunt. So here are your game options. You've got your difficult difficulty levels and let me put it this way, even 2, which is what I've been playing on, is a fair bit harder than you would hope and 1 just makes the enemies stand around a bit too much. The difficulty levels are a little bit unbalanced. You've also got game time and also how to play, which is odd because they have this turned off by default. I'm going to turn it off here as well, but... Other than a list of controls in the move list, they don't really teach you that much about how to actually play the game, which is really disappointing, especially since there's no bloody training mode. Again, like I know they did this before and I think it was Mark of the Wolves, but yeah, there's no training mode and I don't know why. Probably because it wasn't in the, it might not have been in the original arcade release, but seriously, that's something you really should add. There's your sound sliders and here's your video options. But as we all know, in these Code Mystics ports, you can't actually change these and see what it'll look like in-game. You have to actually be in-game. You do also have remappable controls. So, I have remapped it to something that looks a little bit more familiar if you've played something like Mortal Kombat recently. But at the same time, the controls can act up a little bit because sometimes you'll be in the menus, like the actual in-game menus that aren't in the... Um, the actual menus that aren't in the arcade mode, you'll see what I mean. And then there'll be the menus in-game that you need to use the Wii Punch button on. And Wii Punch by default is bound to X, so that this actually makes sense. But it makes the control scheme really uncomfortable, so you actually kind of need to... You actually kind of need to come here and rebind them just by default. Thankfully, you can rebind them to any face button or any shoulder button. No analog stick binding, which actually disappoints me. I'd like to be able to turn, like, the right analog stick into a bind of its own, but I guess that's not a thing that you're allowed to do in this one, which kind of sucks, honestly. So yeah, as I said before, there's no training mode, and the modes you basically get are multiplayer, where you can find a match, create a match, and do an ad hoc session. I only managed to play a couple of games of multiplayer in this, and it was all at 300 ping, and the game ran so slow that it was basically unplayable, which to be fair, is about what you expect when you get into these things. I remember playing the other Code Mystics fighting game ports, which is The Last Blade and Guru Mark of the Wolves. They've done a couple of others, but that's basically the ones I remember in the fighting game genre. And they worked fine when I was with someone who was either on the continent or roughly around my continent. So, I don't see any reason why this wouldn't work. As for why you'd want to bother playing KOF 97 instead of 98 or 14, I have no idea, but we will continue on. So... The only modes you get are 3 versus 3, 1 versus 1, and then Survivor based on both score and time. And there's really no point in playing these three modes down here, so we're just going to head straight for team play. 
Now, this game is a three-on-three -three fighting game, and you can pick your team of three immediately. You've got your two different modes, which are basically just two different ways of getting your uh, desperation attacks. Uh, you can pick any three dudes you like, but you need to play as the three preset teams in order to actually win any trophies. You do also have the boss characters down the bottom, including people like Orochi and fuck Orochi, as I've already said. But again, you pick them, you're not getting shit done in the trophy list, so oh well. So King of Fighters 97, if you couldn't tell, is a fighting game based on the King of Fighters series. Often considered to be one of the most in-depth technical fighters out there. Original, this game was originally built for the Neo Geo, as um, at least I believe it was the Neo Geo at this point in time. And the King of Fighters games, like even if, like even if you've got problems with like you know 97 or 98 or 14 or whatever, whatever game it is that you're playing in the King of Fighters series, it's going to be a good King of Fighters game. It's going to be a good game in general, really, because King of Fighters games are always really well designed. They have fantastic character diversity, and by diversity, I mean diversity of mechanics. Then again, I suppose the character roster is pretty diverse in the nationality sort of style. But yeah, they have fantastic character diversity in, in gameplay. They have an absolute ton of different mechanics and tactics to learn. Like, my personal favorite mechanic in this entire series, just because it gives you an idea of how in-depth this shit gets, is the hopping system. Where you can do regular jumps, right? You can just do regular press up in a direction and you'll jump. But if you hold the opposite direction and then press the direction you want to jump, you'll do a super hop. And you can even do, like, minor hops, which for the life of me I cut. Excuse me. Which for the life of me, I can't remember the button combinations for. The game has a ridiculous amount of just weird little mechanics like that. And that's why I love it. Because there's always some weird shit some dude can pull out on you. Especially with some of these characters. Like, even with this game having like 37 something characters, it still has a lot that it can do to surprise you. Which is nice, because the thing I always like about fighting games is being able to be surprised by them. So if I hit the select button real quick, I pressed the wrong button there, alright. Hit the select button real quick, we'll go into the options again, and we'll go to the video options. So we can change the scan lines, I'll turn off the smooth image just to make it look a bit more pixelated. You can play it in stretched, large, and normal aspect ratios, and you can also turn off the flicker filter. Which will make the shadows look really ugly. Thankfully, I can keep that on. I'm going to. can also change the background style. Not great backgrounds for this one, honestly. But anyway, we're going to play this in scanline mode, in pixel mode. I apologize if the video quality goes to shit because of this. Because, you know, it's YouTube. There's not really that much I can do about it. But here's what it looks like in full scanline mode. With no smoothing filter. But look, even, even after what I'm going to say about this game, King of Fighters is always a good fighting game. Like, while I would definitely recommend a different King of Fighters fighting game over this one, I would definitely say something along the lines of, at least if, you, if you're going to play any King of Fighters game, this isn't the worst start to them. But this game has a lot of weird issues. Which makes me wonder, outside of the whole Chinese community thing, why did they bother bringing it over to us? The game has a bunch of what they call infinites, and infinites are pretty self-explanatory. They're combos that go on forever from specific characters, right? And anyone with a decent amount of skill will be able to pull them off with a bit of, like, you know, practice and stuff like that. And there's a bunch of other things too, like there's a lot of unbalance going on in the characters. There's a bunch of characters that are in this by default that are just banned from competitive play outright just because they're that bad. And there's just all sorts of little things that make me wonder just why the hell they did what they did by bringing over 97. Because 
98 is just a better game. It has more characters, it's better polish, it has no Orochi, because fuck Orochi. And it's just an overall better game. So, I don't know why they would only give you 97. It's just weird. Not to mention that 14 exists, which has like 54 something characters, and that game is... Despite the fact that it looks like a budget PS2 game from 2005, it is still one of the best fighting games I've ever played. And the thing about playing King of Fighters is that... The mechanics and the characters and stuff do change throughout all of the iterations, and... At least with King of Fighters, like, say, 98 on Arcade Archives on the Switch, they give you a decent tutorial with that one, and King of Fighters 98 is still pretty relevant. Compare that to 97, which has no tutorial, and is just... and has a bunch of other things that mean that people aren't going to play this game competitively. And I'm legitimately not sure why they did bring this one over. Then of course you got 14, which has a great tutorial, absolute ton of characters, and is way better balanced. But anyway, let's focus more on the benefits of 97. And the nice thing about 97 is that, well at least the nice thing about King of Fires games in general is that it looks amazing. Like, it's, you know, it's SNK art at its finest, right? 98 doesn't look that much different from 97 just because it was the... Perfect. Jesus. But yeah, it still looks great, even to this day. I'm going to put it back to how it was before, because admittedly all, all the scan... Whoops. All the scan lines and stuff just aren't my thing. The game runs at a pretty solid 60. I haven't noticed anything in the way of performance drops except ones that seem to be in there on purpose. Just because that's that was the way they made the game originally. And you know. When you build a fighting game around hardware inadequacy and then put it on a new platform, in order to make sure that you um In order to make sure that you maintain game balance, you need to make sure that attacks that originally slowed the game down, continue to slow the game down. Great. But yeah, otherwise the game seems to run absolutely fine. Admittedly, I don't have as much experience with 97 as I do 98 or 14, so I can't tell you if there's any, like, minor details wrong with KOF 97's port. And it still has all the strategy and fun and flair of the King of Fighters games with the ridiculous characters, the good move sets, and just the the strategy of deciding who to who to put out first, second and third. All of that neat crap. It's still all here. And while I would definitely recommend you get a different King of Fighters game that isn't bloody that isn't bloody um 97. It's funny, I believe you're actually able to get all of, like, the, um, all of the, what's it called, the Orochi era games via, like, PSP transfer, because there was, like, a PSP collection that had all of them in there, and I'm not entirely sure why they didn't do that, but they did, and it's weird. I admit that I am unfamiliar with my Billy Kane. I had a feeling I was going to get taken out there one way or another. I probably should have just ran out the clock to try and let them have as little health back as possible, but oh well. King. Oh, you bitch. But yeah, the fighting is still satisfying. Stringing together combos and pulling off special moves all works fine on this thing's D-pad. It's... 
It's still a good fighting game, even with all its balance and infinite problems and stuff like that, but I imagine that as soon as you take this game online, you will start running into that problem, because the problem with a badly balanced fighting game is, of course, anyone who already knows the balance issues that were present in the game's original release is going to wipe the floor with anyone who doesn't. And that's why I recommend you don't start with 97, which is annoying because it's the only one that's available on Vita proper. I would have absolutely loved to have said, Hey, we get 14. Like, 14 would have been the best fucking thing. Like, if 14... Whoops. If 14 had come out at any point, it would have been the top fighting game on Vita by far. Like, even beating the crap out of, like, say, Street Fighter 4, for example, or Street Fighter Cross Tekken, I should say. It would have just won that outright. But instead, they had to go with 97. Which only the Chinese play. I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. I mean, seriously, why the hell did that go for 97? It just boggles my mind. What was that? <laughs> okay, that was fucking strange. Oh, I gotcha. Oh, you can sit down. So yeah, the basic, um, the basic... 97 arcade mode is pretty simple. You just go through and beat the crap out of teams of three and eventually you'll fight like a mid boss, then you'll get a couple more teams of three, then you'll get Orochi and fuck Orochi. And really there's not that much else to it. No extra modes or anything, which is a real shame outside of like the survival modes, which honestly mean nothing in a game like this. They're so easy to put in, it's not like it really matters. I don't know how you would extend the King of Fighters 97 with like a secondary special node, but hell, even a tutorial would have been nice. Like I'll show you just the amount the amount of tutorial you get. Uh, we'll just go one, two, three. Why not? So I've heard the select button. We can go and check out the skill list right here. You can see all of the skills, special moves, command moves, and your desperation moves. That is an absolute ton of moves on Kyoku Sanagi, by the way. And if you press the X button, it will let you see all of the different little moves you can do. I mean, to be fair, you could figure out a little bit of what's going on with some of the controls here, but this is really a game you either want one of two things. Now, the way I was originally introduced to King of Fighters was... Basically, I want a copy of King of Fighters 14 from uh, Geo from, on Twitter. He's the guy who is like the head of a major part of PlayStation. He's like... Who's the who wants like one of five King of Fighters 14 codes? I was like yes, and I was like number two. So I never actually go around to playing it too much until I played through um what was it called? Until I played through the arcade mode and I was like, this is okay. But then I actually went and played it with a bunch of my mates. We both uh, me and two of my mates, we all got together, I took my PlayStation 4 over, we all sat down, got, a con got two controllers out, and we just randomed everyone in the bloody game. We randomed our teams, and we played through and just beat the crap out of each other with all of the ridiculous characters. Like, I, one of my favorite characters in 14 isn't actually in this one, but he was the guy who could basically just teleport in the dust. And we'd come up with ridiculous names for people. Like, uh, the, one of my favorite ones that, one of my favorite names that we had for dudes was, um, oh Jesus. One of my favorite names that we had for one of the dudes was Midget Freddy Krueger, because that was basically what he was. 
We called another lady boob window because it was incredibly obvious. And there were just all sorts of silly names we came up along with along the way there. That's one way to get into King of Fighters. The other way to get into King of Fighters is to go and watch like five hours of tutorials and go and practice over and over again all of the different kinds of mechanics because the tutorials on YouTube to explain these things literally go for hours. And King of Fighters 97 does not fit into either of those. Sure, you can take it around to a friend's mate place or with ad hoc play, which is supported in this version. Sure, you could do that, but it would be better to do it in 98 because there's more characters. It would be better to do it in 14 because there's more stuff that's worth laughing at because the design's mainly meant for 2D. People look ridiculous on 3D and... Uh, and I mean ridiculous in an enjoyable way, not an over-the-top and just completely unignorable way. But still, I just... And with King of Fighters 98 and 14 being the ones that basically everyone plays, just because of the fact that they're the actual proper balanced ones that are, like, not so much still supported, but everyone knows that King of Fighters 98 and 14, at least for everyone who's played those games before knows that those are the games to go for. So, it just raises the question again of, seriously, why the hell didn't they port King of Fighters 98 or King of Fighters 14? It's just, it just doesn't make any sense to me. It's got the strategy, and it's still got some of the fun, but for a multitude of different reasons when it comes to just the King of Fighters series in general, I can't recommend you get 97. The port's fine, and the game works as expected. But, why would you get this over 98 on the Switch, 14 on the PS4, or just, like, any other fighting game, really? I mean... There's nothing that bad about King of Fires 97 if you're playing it in single player, but there's next to no content. And again, you basically have to go wiki diving if you want to actually stand a chance to learn how to actually play the game. No one ever loses to Terry. I mean, wins against Terry. What the fuck am I saying? It's funny, because um, one of my mates, the only character he recognized was Terry Bogard. So he'd always say to me he, how he felt bad about beating up Terry. And that, that's a memory that just stuck with me. And I can't imagine King of Fighters 97 just having the same flair as that game. Yeah, it's, it's fine. It works. It does what it's supposed to. I just, I can't recommend it. Like, I know the series well enough to know that this is the weirdest thing. And I don't know why they even bother to release it here. Like, why, why bother? I'm mostly surprised this didn't end up as like a Chinese exclusive or something. Well, that sucked. KO. Andy Bogard versus, um, Christ, I can never remember his name. Billy Kane. Round Go. I guess if you're absolutely desperate for Vita native King of Fighters, it will do. But I know for a fact that you'll get a better first impression of the King of Fighters if you play either 98, whether it be on Switch or PC or what have you, 
Or whether you play um, King of Fighters 14 on PC or PS4. I just know you will. Because I know enough about the series to know that this is actually a fact. If you're absolutely desperate for King of Fighters, that's fine. And, you know, feel free to, um... Ah. Oh. That came down to the wire. I think we're done here. But yeah, if you're absolutely desperate for Vita native King of Fighters, if you're actually familiar with King of Fighters, and you want to play King of Fighters 97 on the Vita, this will do you fine. But if you're unfamiliar with King of Fighters, or if you're familiar with King of Fighters and this doesn't immediately appeal to you, there's no point. Because there are better ways to be introduced to this series than King of Fighters 97, despite the fact that it's still a pretty decent game in and of itself. I know I sound like a bloody, um, elitist, but it's true. Because... Seriously, I had enough trouble getting into 14 when I first got it. As I said, I literally had to take it around to my mate's place, and we had to beat the shit out of each other for hours just to figure out what was going on and how exactly we're meant to play it. Because the King of Fighters 97, unlike... The Last Blade, and... Why did I not say this in the middle of the game? You know what? Fuck it. We'll do one more... ...in team play, just so I can actually get... Uh, ...tell you about actual King of Fighters. Why did I not say this in the middle of the damn game? Alright, we'll just go with the Terry Bogart, Andy Bogart, and Joe Hisashi team, because why the hell not? But here's the thing about King of Fighters... ...that makes it so beginner unfriendly. It's a very stiff game. Your movements are... Like, once you've committed to a movement, you've committed to a movement. The game is very stiff in that sense. And... Especially when you're playing a game like this, that's this old, in comparison to games like The Last Blade, and even Guru Mark of the Walls, which was a pretty... Pretty dramatic shift. Those games are a lot more free-flowing and just generally more fluid than this game is, right? So, you need to spend a fair bit amount of time just getting used to the fact that this game is so stiff. And then you've got all these weird new mechanics that you need to learn, and... Like, bloody George Weedman did this absolutely fantastic little clip where it's basically him just going over all the mechanics and he's just basically falling into a pit of madness. It's... It's just weird. Why would they pick this game? Over the King of Fighters 98, which actually would do slightly better. Or the King of Fighters 14. We know he's just standing there. Uh, or the King of Fighters 14, where you just end up in that weird situation where it's all in 3D, but it feels like a stiff 2D game. I don't know any of the, the this team's moves. I wasn't expecting that to actually be a desperation move. That was bad. Alright, uh, desperation move. There we go. That's what that's supposed to look like. So let me just say it one more time. This is not the best place to start playing King of Fighters. The only game, the only person I can really recommend this to is the sort of person who wants to play the King of Fighters 97 on the go and hasn't already figured out a way to do that. Because trust me, most people have already figured out a way to do that if they were that desperate to play King of Fighters 97 on the go. If you haven't played King of Fighters before, this will not do as an introduction to the series just due to its overwhelming mechanical depth which they do not explore with anything outside of your traditional control screen in this version of the game. So I would, as as like an actual, not as a Vita YouTuber, but as someone who 
enjoys playing the King of Fighters, despite the fact that he absolutely sucks at it. Pick 98 or 14 over this one. Those are the only ones that people who you probably know, considering my YouTube audience at the moment, the, those, um, those are the only games that are probably being played by people you know right now, 98 and 14. And they're also a lot more beginner friendly, and they're also a lot more documented, so you can look them up properly. And, yeah, that's, um, that's pretty much it. They're just, they're just overall better games, and I'm worried that the King of Fighters 97, with its balance weirdness and its infinite combos and its stuff, will give people the wrong idea of King of Fighters. Which I hate. Because I really would like to see more people playing King of Fighters. A lot of people do play King of Fighters, just not many. You get more people playing Tekken and Street Fighter, which is nothing really wrong with it, but honestly, I don't like Street Fighter that much. Tekken is actually, the latest Tekken is actually pretty good. I love Yoshimitsu in Tekken, so there you go. That was half an hour of me whining about the King of Fighters 97 instead of it not being the King of Fighters 98 or the King of Fighters 14. Yeah, you've already heard what I've had to say. And you've had some gameplay in the background. So if you want to take the dive just because you can't play fighting games on Vita and you don't have a PS4 to remote play 14 with, this will be alright, but honestly, I think it might give you a bad impression of the entire series. Not to mention that you'll basically have to go look up a wiki to know what the fuck you're doing. So there you go. This has been Blue Maxima, and I will see you all next time.